Hello, I'm Atsuba George, and I'm so glad and excited to be bringing God's word to you on this last day of the month of January. Hey, today is the last day of January, and like we always do, we enter into the first of the month with fasting and prayer. Now, if you follow me and you believe in, in, in our ministry and in what God has called me to do, this is very important for you. Join me as we begin tonight by 12 midnight to pray and fast into tomorrow. And normally we fast at every word. We, we pray, we meet to pray at every watch. And the meeting is always via Zoom. So the Zoom information should be on your screen uh, or you can send us a message and we will give you all that information. Now, this is very important. So starting from tonight, we'll begin to pray at 12 midnight. And the prayer usually is for one hour. For one hour, we we'll pray from 12 to 1. And then you can rest and then wake up again at 3, 3 a.m. And then we pray till 4. You can rest. And then we pray at 6 to 7. So one hour at every watch is what we are going to be doing. Now, the Lord commanded us this year that I'm going to spend uh, some time to teach. And then based on what we teach, we're going to release, open ourselves and, and begin to pray. Because we are going to begin to see diverse kinds of manifestations this year. Trust me. So join me. Plan for this. Set your alarm right now so you don't forget. Set it right now. I don't want you to miss this meeting tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Father, we give you praise. Let the heavens be open over us right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now in faith. Say, Father, I demand on this last day of the month, my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we're talking about tithing yesterday. And I've explained to you that the tithe belongs to God. And if it belongs to God, then you better give it to Him. How do I give it to Him? Take it to Him. He's alive. Praise God. He hears. He speaks. It's amazing. I remember... Many years ago, when the Lord began to teach me this, and I began to share with, with a few people, and the question I always, I always got then was, how many believers hear God? And I was like, no. The right question should actually be, how many are believers? Because <laughs> if you don't hear God, then what do you believe? No, no, sincerely, let's think about it. If you don't hear God by yourself, then what have you believed? You are seriously still in the Old Testament. Yeah. If you don't hear God by yourself, for yourself, if you still always need a prophet to hear God for you, if you still always need somebody, you know, no pastor, these things, you know, if you still have to do that, you are in the Old Testament. Your salvation is in deep question. Yeah. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. The characteristics of my sheep is that they hear my voice. If you don't hear his voice, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. You just might not be his sheep. What do you mean? All these years, you just might not be his sheep. I'm so sorry to inform you. So what do I do now? First of all, confirm that you are his sheep. You need to be sure you're born again. You need to be sure. You know, say, ah, let's give God. Have you given your heart to Jesus Christ? Eh, it's one thing to give it to him. It's another thing for him to receive it. I've given my heart to Jesus Christ. When did he give my heart to Jesus Christ? Oh, 10th of January, 1982. 10th of February, 1999. Or 
2001 or 2015 whatever the date is that you gave your heart to jesus christ the question is did he receive it from you praise god oh yes because see if i give you something i expect you to receive it from me and then there is a reason i gave you that thing in the first place if i give you a car and previously before i gave you that car you were trucking and then i give you the car and then the next day the next few weeks i still see you trekking it should raise a lot of questions in my heart probably you didn't receive the car that i gave you because the purpose of me giving you that car is that it will it will save you from trekking and after giving you the car from my own end i still see you trek hey something is wrong so you saying you've given your heart to Jesus Christ is not enough. Has he received it? Now, if he has received it, is he doing with it what you think he should be doing with it? Why did you give him your heart in the first place? Now, these are questions that are important to ask yourself. When you come to Christ, why did you come to Christ? How could you have come to Christ and yet you're still doing things the same way you used to do them before you came to Christ. So what is the essence of Christ in your life? See that now? Now you were struggling in your life before you met Christ. And now you came to Christ and you've given your heart to him. But then you find out that you are still struggling. You need to ask yourself, did he receive what you gave to him? You gave him your life to be in charge of your life. Did he receive your life from you? Is he now in charge of your life? These are important questions that you should ask. And the same thing with tithing. The reason a lot of God's children are not blessed like they should is because they think they have been giving to God their tithes and offerings. But then, brothers and sisters, it is time to begin to question, did he receive it from me now he said something he said and i want you to watch he says prove me bring you all the tithe to the storehouse that there may be meat in my house i was explaining this to you yesterday the storehouse is not a physical place on earth the storehouse is in heaven according to the teachings of jesus the storehouse is in heaven now when he begins to instruct us this is how this thing works practically now i've been practicing this for years and i can tell you this truth it doesn't hey listen when when you know how how people think something is not working and then because it's not working for them and then they just conclude that it's not working now i'm a testimony practical testimony of what i'm teaching you when god says prove me and see if i will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing you know what it is for 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 god to pour you out a blessing pouring you out a blessing is different from you struggling to get something for yourself if i'm pouring you out a blessing if I'm pouring out water for you, it's eliminating you walking over to the fridge to get yourself some water. Right? If I say, come, let me pour out water for you. It simply means you will come to me. Now, I'm not a tap. Are you listening to me? I'm not a tap. Neither am I a water manufacturing factory. But if I say to you, come, I will pour out water for you. It should let you know that I have water. And from what I have, I want to pour it out to you. It eliminates, now for that moment, it eliminates the whole process of you going to get water for yourself. I want you to understand what I'm saying. And that's how you reason with the word of God. So God says, Prove me if and see if I will not pour out a blessing for you. So he has promised that he will pour out a blessing. Now, what does that do? It eliminates struggling from my parts. Now, 
another person is going out to look for work or to look for what to do or to look for how to make ends meet but then i go to him for him to pour out a blessing for me and it's not just an assumption i actually receive the blessing from him david said god gives to his beloved blessings even when they sleep he pours it out to them all that has been missing so far all these years in your life is that you haven't been really sure that god has been receiving your tithes i've been so faithful with my tithe but has he been receiving it see that now jesus said the holy spirit is there and what is he supposed to do he would guide you into all truth including tithing he will guide you properly how to give your tithes he will guide you it's his money right so why don't you give it to him Hey, but if I give it to church, I'll give it to him. No, sir. As good as, you know, imagine, I, I use this example all the time because that's exactly what the Lord said to me when he was teaching me this. Imagine you do a business with, your, with, with, with a friend of yours and he's in another city. And he calls you up and says, hey, the business we did, yes, the payment has come. Oh, wow, wonderful. And he says, I actually, as I was in the bank to receive the payment, I, I turned and I, I saw, remember that your cousin, you, you, you introduced me to that last time you came around. He said, oh yeah, I, I saw him. I'm like, oh, since he's your cousin, I gave him your portion. Now, would you be so pleased with that? He said, what, who told you to do that? Praise God. Now, now, you wouldn't want to accept that, but that's what a lot of people do to God. Where is your tithe? I gave it in church. Where is your tithe? I gave it to that widow. Where is your tithe? I gave it to... Now, it looks okay. But I want, you to t I want to tell you this truth. If anything you do is not by the express command of the Lord to you, then you have no proof that he has received it. So can God tell me to give my tithe in church? Of course, yes. Can God tell me to give my tithe to a widow? Of course, yes. Can God? Now, God can even tell you to give your tithe to a stranger. Now, when when it's stranger, even people who are not saved. How can God tell me to give a tithe to people who are not saved? Yes, because you think they are not saved, but He knows everyone who's His child, saved or unsaved. He knows. And I'll tell you this truth: now, if we as God's children sincerely commit ourselves to tithing right. Number one, we will reduce the poverty on the earth. Number two, we will reduce the crime rate on the earth. Because someone is sitting down in his heart, in his house, and in his heart, he is meditating on how to commit a crime. Why does he want to commit a crime? Because he wants to make ends meet. He wants to get some money. Sometimes when you sit down with people who have turned out to be having criminals, when you sit down with them and ask them, when did this begin? You realize that most times it's connected to bitterness. And that bitterness came from disappointment. They were expecting something. Maybe someone promised them something. Maybe they, they, they felt they were going to get something from an organization or from someone. And then they, they got utter failure. And that day they made up their mind and said, you know what? It, it, it's obvious God doesn't care. So I'm going to do what I have to do. And that's where their journey in crime began. But think about it. If you had heard the Lord on that day, when this person has told himself that if this thing does not happen this night, I will do whatever it takes to get it. If you, have heard, if you had heard God that day, and walked up to that person and said, hey, how are you doing? While I was praying last night, the Lord instructed me and I should come and give you this. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Did you say God told you? Yeah, he told me. God speaks, you know. Well, I don't think I've heard him before. But yeah, he told me. And we say, you know what? This was exactly the prayer I prayed last night. And you coming, you're like an angel to me. 
Now I've heard that testimony many times. And I know people who have heard that same testimony many times, praise God. Why? Because we are dedicated in tithing the way God commanded us to tithe. Now this is exactly how he commanded us to tithe. Tithing is important, first of all. Don't believe anyone who tells you Titan is not important. Don't believe anyone who tells you Titan is of the Old Testament. Now, even if, if we have to go through scriptures to prove that to you, you would only see how foolish it is to think that Titan is no more relevant today. But I'm admonishing you. You see, I'm admonishing you and I expect if you have any doubt, the best thing to do is sit down with your Bible and ask the Lord, Lord, if you are the one that instructed this thing truly, then teach me. Yep. Don't listen to people who are confused and, and they try to figure out some certain things in their head and then they come to that conclusion. That if, if Titan, no, 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 no. Ask the Holy Spirit. Everyone who should teach about Titan should tell you his dealings with the Holy Spirit concerning the subject. If not, they're just a theologian. You're just a theologian trying to score points. Titan is very important to God today. He is commanded, he is still commanding where the Titan is concerned. And if every one of us will obey him where Titan is concerned, I'm telling you, we are going to unlock so great a blessing. Think about it. If every one of us is doing this right, he said, I'll pour out a blessing. You will have room. You will not have room enough to receive it, to contain it. How many of us are really enjoying this blessing? How many of you can really say, you know what, with or without my job, I'll be fine? Because you've tested the blessing of the Lord. I'm not saying because you've established one business or something. No, I'm talking about those who wait on the Lord. God blesses people, trust me, He does. And sometimes when you hear certain preachers talk, you wonder if they have any idea the God that they are talking about. This is the one who commanded a bird to feed the prophets. Not one day, for many days. Many days. This is a God who fed the children of Israel with manna in the wilderness for 40 years. This is a God who when they asked for meat and Moses was trying to get angry for God, God actually got angry with Moses for trying to get angry <laughs> for the people for asking for meat. God says, Moses, come on, get out of the way. I'll give them meat because they want meat. And Moses said, where are we going to get meat for? God said, Moses, do you know who you're talking to? I'll give them meat not for a day, not for a week. I'll give them a whole month. Now they ate until it began to come out of their nostrils. Not because of the people, because of Moses. That's the God we're talking about. He didn't say, Moses, I know what to do. There's a village near you and they rear a lot of animals. I want you to go and conquer them. And get that. That's human reasoning. But the God we talk about that says he will open up the windows of heaven is that type of person that they will wake up in the morning, go outside, see man and bring it in prepare and eat and they did that for 40 years he wasn't tired he didn't say guys look where was he coming from he's the one that the angel met elijah pre with prepared food i says look wake up eat he ate a little and said oh no what happened ah, wake up wake up wake up eat because the journey is far he is that God. What are you talking about? When he said he will open the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing. Brothers and sisters, you need to think again. Are you, are you blessed? If you are not blessed, then start doing things that will cause him to pour out the blessing. And stop arguing. Father, I bless you. You are confirming your word in our lives every day. And so it is for everyone who is listening right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Remember tonight at 12 midnight to join us. And God bless you. Bye-bye.